What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com back with another SketchUp extension tutorial for you. So as a lot of you know, sometimes I get questions either in the comments or in my email asking how to do certain things in SketchUp. And while I wish I could respond to all of those, I can't really get to all of them, but I can occasionally make a tutorial trying to help with some of that stuff. So this is one of those questions and uh, I just wanted to kind of show you how to create a parametric kind of organic ceiling shape. And so basically it's going to be taking a shape and bending it along a curved face. So today's video is brought to you by my supporters on Patreon. Patreon is the website where you can support creators that you like on YouTube. So if you like what I'm doing in this channel, um, maybe consider supporting the show in the notes down below. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so the question I got was how to take, uh, basically create like a parametric ceiling. So a ceiling that kind of follows a curve. So basically you'd have something like this, which is kind of a uh, somewhat complex shape and uh, you'd actually want that to follow more of a curve. And so the way that I would do that is I would start off by just uh, by modeling what the ceiling would look like flat. So in this case, this ceiling is just gonna be a series of disks. So you'd have connector disks here, and then you'd have other disks, which I've uh, basically created by extruding an arc around a circle, making up the overall shape. And so that, all of that right now is modeled as uh, groups and components. So everything is just inside a group and then everything is in components as well. well what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to use the extension Flowify because we need to bend this along a curving four-cornered shape. Um, but for right now, I'm just going to basically use this shape in order to... Uh, in order to draw a rectangle that's the same size as my circle. So you can see how I'm using my corners right here in order and uh, inferencing to figure out basically a rectangle shape that's gonna be the same size as the ceiling assembly. So you can see how I'm finding the furthest point out and I'm drawing these lines level with that. So you can see how I hold the shift key while I'm using the line tool in order to lock this to an axis so that I can basically use the inferencing to figure out exactly what the size of the square needs to be. And then uh, once I get two corners, I can just use the rectangle tool to just draw a rectangle. So basically all that I've done is I've just created a rectangle that's the size of the object that I'm trying to bend. And I'm gonna go ahead and double click on that rectangle and I'm gonna make it a group and then I'm gonna use the move tool in copy mode. So select the, select the rectangle, tap the M key, then tap control to put it in copy mode. I'm gonna click on this corner and then I'm gonna click over here. And so basically what I've done is I've created a visual reference so I can see exactly how big this shape needs to be. Now I'm gonna come in here and start drawing some curves. So in this case, what I want is I want this corner to be higher, I want this corner to be lower. Basically, I'm just drawing points in space using the line tool where I want these to be. So you can see how on this corner, I'm gonna draw a line that's straight up. And so now I can come in here and I can create a curve that basically runs across this face. And you could either, if you just wanted this to be a single curve, you could just come in here and draw an arc or you could draw a rectangle across these. And then within that face, you could draw something a little bit more complex. So let's say for example, that I wanted this one to curve up and also down, I would use the face that I created here in order to do that. And then I would just kind of erase out my extra. And so I'm just gonna go through and I'm just gonna draw the profile of what I want this whole thing to look like um, using these points. And so now I'm just gonna come in here and I'm just gonna basically erase out the extra. The other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, for now I'm gonna hide this square. So you can see how basically what I'm doing is I'm erasing out everything that doesn't make up that frame that I just drew. So you gotta make sure you don't have any extra geometry over here, but you can see how basically I have a curving frame. And so one of the complicated things about doing something like this is you need to put a face inside this frame. And so in this case, what I'm gonna do in order to do that is I'm gonna use the extension Curvaloft. Curvaloft has a skinning option that basically allows you to create skins along frames. So in this case, I could just select this and I wanna select the option for skin contours. When I click on this, you can see how this comes in here and this actually creates a face along this frame. And I'm just gonna go ahead and click in order to create that face. So you can see now I have a curving face that I can now use with Flowify in order to basically bend 
my ceiling shape along. And uh, some of you may be asking, why didn't I use soap, skin, and bubble? The reason for that is that Curviloff creates a little bit better geometry. It creates the quad geometry in here, and it also doesn't create a lot of gaps. So if I look at this, if I look at view, hidden geometry, you can see how this basically came in here and created everything with quads and there's no gaps. I've had problems with uh, soap, skin, and bubble not, not necessarily filling in all the blanks, and then this doesn't work very well. So now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna turn hidden geometry off. And now I'm gonna get this ready for Flowify. So I'm gonna take this shape and I'm gonna move it off to the side. Then I'm also gonna take my ceiling and my flat rectangle and I'm gonna create a copy of those. And I like to create a copy instead of doing this on my original so that I have a backup copy of my original in case something goes wrong. But I'm just gonna move this over until it's directly above. And so real quick, let's just take a look at what we have here so far. We have our ceiling shape that we wanna bend. We have the rectangle shape that's under our ceiling shape, which you can see if I hide that geometry. We've got our target shape. So that's what we want this geometry to look like when we're done. And what we need now, if you remember the way Flowify works, you need a base flat shape you need a target shape and you need a pair of target lines. So your target lines are just gonna go from one corner to the other corner. So you're just gonna draw one there, one here, and then you're gonna put those in a group. And so now what I have here is my geometry is hidden for right now. We're just worried about our target group. We have our base shape in a group. We have our two target lines in a group and we have the shape that we're gonna bend things along also in a group. That grouping is really important. So if you look at this, if you look at this object, you need these three objects to be in a group, and then you need to select all three of them and right click and click make group. And so what this is gonna look like in the outliner is it's gonna look like you have an overall group, then you have your target face, your base face, and your target lines, and those all need to be in there as groups. You will get an error message if you don't do this. And the way that you can check to see if you've set everything up right is you can just click on this object, this group of three groups, and go up to Extensions, Flowify, Impose Grid. All right, and so we have a little bit of an interesting issue here because if you come into Flowify and uh, you try to impose your grid, it's not going to work. And this is something that can kind of slip by you. I know it slipped by me for a long time. And the thing is, if you remember the way that we drew these, um, this rectangle, if we select everything in here, so if I drag, and cross, drag across all of this, you can see this tells me this has eight entities. Well, that means that Flowify is not going to work. And the reason it has eight entities is because if you remember the way that we drew our corners, we actually drew this to this corner and then we drew a little segment off of here. And so because of that, this line is actually two segments. And so the way that Flowify looks at this, this actually isn't a rectangle because it has more than four edges. So the way that we're gonna fix that, cause I think we have one, two, three locations where that's a problem is we're just gonna draw a line segment off of this point and then we're gonna erase this out. And you can see how SketchUp will heal this line into a single edge when we do that. So we're just gonna do that for all three of our corners. So now that's in there as an individual line and then we'll do it off of this one as well. So that's healed as well. So now, if we were to double click on this to select the face and all of its edges, you can see how there's five entities, which is what it should be. It should be four edges and a face. So now, if we go into Flowify, we select all of this and we do extensions, Flowify, impose grid. Our grid is gonna get imposed inside this shape once I have everything set up properly. That means that Flowify is ready to go. So now what we wanna do is we just wanna take this geometry and we want to, I believe I have some hidden already. So we wanna do an unhide all. And you can see how now my ceiling is sitting here ready to go. But right now it's not gonna work because if we click and drag across this, we have our target group selected and we have our geometry to be bent. But if we try to run Flowify, it's gonna give us an error saying that this source geometry group must create raw or contain raw faces. So what that means is you can't have a series of components or groups in here. Um, what you want instead is those all need to be raw faces, which is another reason I keep a backup copy of my base geometry. Because you need to go inside this group 
you need to select all of this and right click and click explode. So what that'll do is that'll remove all the group and component functionality in here and take this back to raw faces. And again, just note that when you work with Flowify, the way everything is grouped is super important. So one more time as a review, if I look at my outliner, I'm gonna have one group with my target ge or with my geometry to be bent and it needs to contain raw geometry. And then I'm gonna have a second group that contains my target shape, my base shape, and my target lines. And then to run Flowify, and I recommend saving first, you're just gonna select this whole group. You're gonna go up to extensions, Flowify, Flowify. And that, it's gonna take a little while because it's gotta bend all of this geometry, but that's basically gonna bend this along this face. And if you get an error that says not enough input, it means that you didn't set your groups up properly. I know I'll get 15 questions on this video about that because that's always the question I get. If you get a not enough input error, you set your groups up wrong. So go back and double check them. All right, so as you can see, um, that took a little while but it came in here and it bent my geometry. And what I'm gonna do for the sake of this tutorial is I'm just gonna move this off to the side like this. And then I'm gonna take everything else and I'm just gonna hide it. Cause really we only wanna look at this ceiling geometry. And so if you look at the ceiling geometry, it got bent along the face or along the organic shape that we wanted it to bend along. And you can create whatever kind of shape you want with this process. But the one thing you might notice is your geometry comes in here and it's all kind of chopped up. And actually it looks kind of cool if you wanted to come in here and just, if you wanted to just leave it like this, you could probably do that. But in this case, probably what I would do is recommend selecting it and using the soften edges tool. And uh, you can just check this box for soften coplanar and you can use the slider in order to uh, hide all those hidden edges in there. And that'll give you a nice organic looking ceiling within SketchUp. So leave a comment below, let me know what you thought. Was this helpful to you? Um, have you used this method before? I just love having that SketchUp conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing in this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. So make sure you check out this that link in the notes down down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.